When we look at the fossil record in rocks, we see similar patterns everywhere. Animals like trilobites, these flattish, roundish things here, are found on the lowest levels, and higher up we begin to see more complexity. It's important to note that this is not how life began, however. This is simply when life began to leave a lot of evidence in the fossil record. Previous to this point, the animals were all soft-bodied, worm-like creatures, and soft bodies just tend to dissolve into nothing when they die. Previous to animals existing, it was bacteria and single-celled organisms going back billions of years. Trilobites, though, were among the first animals with a hard calcium carbonate shell, and that's what we are seeing when we're looking at these fossils. It was a very, very successful animal, lasting hundreds of millions of years, beginning in the early Cambrian, 520 million years ago. The reason for its success was undoubtedly the evolution of this hard shell, which would clearly be a huge selective advantage against predation. Now, looking at the fossil record of the Grand Canyon, we can see that the oldest fossils there are in fact stromatolites. These things here, which are colonies of bacteria, which photosynthesize, these are called cyanobacteria. Then we see trilobites a layer higher. And then we see these weird plant-like animals called crinoids. And then we get a bunch of other marine animals. Nowhere worldwide do we see land animals at the bottom, in these bottom layers, because land animals did not exist 520 million years ago. Above these first hard-bodied animals, we start to find a lot of fish fossils during a period known as the Devonian. Plants and insects had already made it to the land. Then in the late Devonian period, we start to see tetrapods, four-legged animal fossils appearing in the record. These evolved from fish that had evolved primitive lungs and legs in order to walk on the land. And I know that to some of you that sounds absolutely ridiculous. Take a look at this. This is the epaulette shark, an actual shark, which is a fish. It has the ability to shut off parts of its brain to reduce the need for oxygen. And it lives in very shallow water in the Great Barrier Reef. It's pretty clever, right? Wait, what's it doing now? Walking? Yes, it can walk on its fins. A walking shark. Good luck sleeping tonight. In Canada, some fossils of this creature called Tiktaalik were discovered. It's technically a fish, and it lived about 375 million years ago. And this is one of the most amazing transitional fossils ever found, having many characteristics of fish and tetrapods. Its fish characteristics include fish gills, fish scales, and fish fins. Fishapod characteristics include half fish, half tetrapod limb bones and joints, fish fins with bones and joints inside, including a functional wrist joint, and these radiating fish-like fins instead of toes, and a half fish, half tetrapod ear region. And then finally, the holy tetrapod characteristics include tetrapod rib bones, tetrapod mobile neck, with a separate pectoral girdle, and perhaps most importantly, tetrapod lungs. Gills and lungs. That seems pretty useful. Early tetrapods remained close to the water to lay their eggs, which, like fish eggs, were still soft. But these tetrapods had access to many more new food sources on the land, the plants and the insects that were already there. Amphibians soon arose from tetrapods, able to live equally at home in both land and water environments, yet they still had to lay their eggs in the water. Amphibians are born as larvae with gills, and then later on they metamorphose into adults with lungs. Reptiles also arose from tetrapods around about 300 million years ago, and reptiles were the first vertebrates, animals with a backbone, that were able to live fully on the land. Remember, we're talking millions of years of very, very gradual evolution caused by small beneficial mutations, which allowed the most adapted animals to flourish in their environment. Dinosaurs then arose from reptiles around 240 million years ago, in a period called the Triassic. Mammals also evolved from a spin-off from the ancestor of reptiles called synapsids. That happened around 200 million years ago in the late Triassic to early Jurassic period. Unlike dinosaurs, reptiles and fish, mammals no longer laid eggs. They gave birth to live young and fed them milk through mammary glands. Early mammals were small because it made a lot of sense to avoid the dinosaurs as much as possible. As I already discussed, birds started to evolve from dinosaurs around 150 million years ago. 
Archaeopteryx is clearly a species in transition between both and many, many similar dino birds have been found since. The small size of mammals and the versatility of birds allowed both of them to survive the extinction of three quarters of species on Earth during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event around 66 million years ago, when a massive asteroid hit the Earth just off South America. With no dinosaurs around, mammals got big. Some went back to the water and got really big, like the whale. The blue whale, which exists today, is the largest animal that has ever existed on Earth. Whales are mammals, not fish. They've got placentas, they feed milk to their young, and they are warm-blooded, just like other mammals, and completely unlike fish. They have bones in the front flippers, arm, wrist, hand, and finger bones, which are very similar to other mammals, like hippos and humans. Clearly though, whales do not have legs. However, all whale species today have the remains of a pelvis, and some species have been discovered with what looks like small vestigial hind legs. So if evolution is correct, then we should expect to find examples of whale-like creatures with hind legs. Anything else would be a disaster for the theory. In 1990 in Egypt, over 200 skeletons of Basilosaurus Isis were discovered from a period of 37 million years ago. If you're wondering why it's a saurus, incomplete skeletons were first discovered in 1834, but they were thought to be from a giant reptile. Today, it's rather clear that we're looking at something very much more whale-like, and this is likely the second largest animal that ever lived. As for hind legs, it had these relatively tiny and absolutely useless limbs, for walking on at least, which it obviously never did. Basilosaurus was not the ancestor of modern whales, however. Just like Archaeopteryx, it was another evolutionary dead end. Today we believe that whales evolved from Dorudon, a smaller creature from around 40 million years ago. It too had vestigial hind legs. Going back to 46.5 million years ago, we find this sea-dwelling creature called Rhodhocetus. Its skeleton is very similar to Dorudon's, but it has clear hind legs, which probably meant it could walk on land. Just not for very long though, because the body would have been too heavy to support for very long, and fossils of this animal were almost always found alongside other marine animals. A million years previous to Rhodocetus was Ambulocetus, which was mostly aquatic, but could clearly walk on land when required. This is yet another true transitional fossil. And finally we get to Pachycetus, the mostly land-dwelling mammal which would have spent some time hunting in the water. And I realise many of you will find it difficult to believe that this is an ancestor of modern whales, but it was classified as an early cetacean due to features of the inner ear which are only found in whales, dolphins and porpoises. That is it in the entire animal kingdom. Whales, dolphins, porpoises and pachycetus have the same inner ear characteristic. And there is a kicker here, because genetically, the closest animal to today's whales is the hippopotamus. But whales didn't descend from the hippo, both descended from a common ancestor. And when you consider that hippos spend an awful lot of time in the water, 16 hours per day, and are able to hold their breath underwater for 5 minutes, and they give birth and feed their young underwater, and they've also got multi-chambered stomachs, just like the whale, which incidentally is very, very rare for carnivores as whales are. Multi-chambered stomachs are for eating lots of grass. And next up, in the final part of this evolution mini-series, we'll find out just how special humans really are.